Hey there, I'm Robin from Foo Events, and in this tutorial, I'm going to create a e-commerce conference website, and I'm going to try to do it in a 30 minute period. So to get started, we're going to use InstaWP to generate a development site that already has WooCommerce installed. And when we're done with the site, we can use their migration tools to push it to our favorite hosting company. But this just speeds up the setup process and gives us a, a sandbox site to start off straight away. Okay, so once it's generated, the first step will be to complete the WooCommerce setup wizard. Yeah, I'm just going to specify my store's location. I'm based in Cape Town, South Africa. So I'm going to enter the address, postal code, city, and I'm going to update the email address. This is the default one used by InstaWP for my account, but I'm going to change it to our demo email address so that we receive any emails if needed. I'm going to go quite quickly through the setup process because this is a tutorial website. We're not going to share any um, statistical information and we're also going to skip some of the, the information steps that are not needed. So we're going to sell a physical and digital product. Just uh, FYI, that's why I selected both. We're going to have less than 10 products and this is a new site. We're not going to be selling elsewhere just yet. So we're going to skip these steps too. We're going to install our theme later on, so I'm just going to skip over these and get straight into the WordPress side of things. So the first thing we need to do is change to US dollars. We're not going to use a South African currency for this demo. And we're going to save that. And then we're going to head over to payments. So in order for, when we, when we set the site up to sell tickets, uh, we'll need to complete the the orders in order to generate tickets so we're going to set up two options we're going to set up direct bank transfer and we're also going to set up paypal and this is just you know for this to be a complete uh, conference website we do need to install a payment gateway so we're going to use paypal because it's pretty straightforward and most people have access to it so we're going to complete the setup process this is essentially just authenticating uh, with paypal giving a permission to act as a payment service set your account details blank them out into your password and lastly allow PayPal to connect to your, your account to Google Commerce all the details are correct so we're going to enable PayPal and then the last thing I want to do is I only want to display the PayPal button on the checkout page. So I removed the cart and the single page options there. The reason for this is again, we're going to be capturing uh, attendee information at checkout using Foo Events. So we, we want to make sure people go through the checkout process. Okay, now we're going to install the Elementor plugin. This is a popular page builder that we can use. Uh, this isn't a requirement, this is just one I'm comfortable with and given the 30 minute window I want to make sure it's the, the tool that I'm most comfortable with to build this site. But you can use uh, you know, the block editor or Beaver Builder or any builder that's, that suits your uh, preference. I'm going to skip the steps over there and I'm going to go straight to the theme. Again I'm going to install the Astro theme but you can install any theme. This is just one I'm again comfortable with and I think we'll be able to set the site up as fast as possible using this theme for me. But for you, it might be a different theme, so use what you what you enjoy the most. Okay, then we're going to install, or we're going to upload all the media that we're going to use for the site. So I sourced a bunch of stock uh, photos, and I made a logo and an icon, and I also created product pictures, which I'm going to use later. So I'm going to upload them all in one shot, and maybe we don't have to uh, waste time uploading multiple times throughout the, the build. So the last images over here it's product images okay and we'll let those upload so we're just checking on my requirement stock there seeing where we're at okay the next step is to add the various pages of the site that's the home page about page the schedule page the contact page and the blog page 
So I've opened up uh, all the tabs needed for each page, just so we can jump through them quickly. And I'm going to set up the I'm going to set up the individual pages. I'm not going to add the content just yet. So I'm going to do kind of in a batch process. So I'm adding the contact page, the schedule page, and the last one will be the blog page. Okay, all our media is uploaded as well. So I'm gonna head over to settings, reading, and here I'm just gonna define the home page as the home page. So when going to the root of the site, you'll see the home page, and then I'm setting the blog page that we created as the post page, which is essentially gonna be a list of blog posts. And I'll just make sure that's saved. Okay, now we're gonna open up each page in the Elementor interface. So allow us to modify them. And add the relevant content to them. Oh, we forgot to activate the theme. So I'm going to do that quickly. And then I'm going to just quickly refresh each of these pages so we can see them in the Astra theme rather than the, the theme that was installed by default. Okay, Astra is activated. Everything's looking good. So now that we've created all those pages, I'm also going to set up a menu. So I'm going to enter main menu over there, generate it, and then I'm going to add all my pages, and then I'm going to quickly rearrange them to the right order. Again, this is just for our for this tutorial, for this challenge, but you can create whatever pages you need for your conference. And I'm sure you'll have more than 30 minutes to do so. So I just wanted to make sure we had a, a full reflection of a conference website, your average conference website, by creating all of these pages. Yeah, I made a small mistake. I didn't need to go through that for each of those options. We only needed to do for the primary menu, but wasted a few valuable seconds there. Again, I'm gonna refresh each of the pages just so we can see the menu reflect correctly and the next step is to start building the home page oh before we do that uh, the home page the default colors has a blue title which I'm not a big fan of uh, so we can change that to black and then we're also going to use blue for the accent color on the site as the blue it matches the logo we created so it'll just bring it all together so we're using the elementor settings for that Okay, I'm going to drag on our page title. We have a subtitle where we're going to display the date. And then we're going to have a little blurb of text, kind of an introduction on the home page. And then of course we're going to add a button. So this, this button we'll update later, we'll add a link to the product where they can actually purchase a ticket. So that's our main call to action to purchase the tickets for the event. So I'll be just going to change the title um, H tags and we're going to center align them. And then we still need to paste in copy for that section. That's just the default text that Elementor uses. But we do have our own paragraph that we're going to add. Oops, skipped over it. We'll get back to that later. Okay, so we want to add a background to that text area. We're going to use one of the images we uploaded. So I'm just going to search for it, have the word home in it. Yep, there it is. We're going to set some styles just to center it nicely and use the cover display option. And then you can't really, you know, we're going to make the text white and you can't see it so well. So I'm adding a slight overlay just to darken the image and that'll make the white text pop when we change its colors. And I'm also adding some padding just to give some space around the text. And then we make all the text white. Elementor also includes, uh, offers a bunch of templates, as does Astra, that you can use to speed this process up. 
but I didn't want to get caught in trying to modify what they'd already done. So I thought I'll start from scratch and just build a basic home page for this demo. But if you were building a conference website, you know, you could spend hours building really nice pages and using various resources available to, to create beautiful layouts. But for this one, we need something quick, simple, and effective. A little tweak over there. Okay, and then we're going to dump some text below that, which we're actually going to return to later and style a little bit nicer. But uh, just to make sure we have something in place for the 30 minute time frame, we're just going to put plain text in the text area there. And then later on we're going to pretty it up a little bit. Here I'm just trying to set up H tags for the titles and uh, keep it as simple as possible. Text is also quite wide, so I'm going to add some padding, and bring it in a little bit, just so it fits a little bit nicer on the page. In my rush, I'm getting a little bit confused there, but we can write in the end. There we go, looking a little bit better and then a slight margin above and below, just to give it some space to breathe. The last thing I'm gonna do is add some profile pictures of the three speakers. So to do this, I create a single column. I drop in an image, drop in a title that we're gonna use for the name, the name of the speaker. And then we're gonna choose one of the profile pictures that we uploaded previously. I've already got a few names written over there that we're going to use. These are made up names and these are just pictures, stock pictures, but in your case you'd have a real speaker and you'd have profile pictures that you could use. So now I'm going to duplicate that column into three different columns. I should have actually sent a line the name, it would have saved me a few seconds later, but uh, not, not too much of a, a crisis, only a second or two. So I'm first changing all the profile pictures and then I'm going to copy the correct names for each. I'll center it while I'm doing that. And then we'll quickly fix that one. Yeah, so homepage is looking good. It's not amazing, but we got all our content in place. We got our speakers displaying correctly. We have a nice homepage cover image and we have a big call to action button on the top half of the page above the fold that allow people to jump straight to the ticket buying, which is one of the most important parts of a conference website. So, so far, so good. Making a few minor adjustments over here. We're chasing the half an hour time limit. We don't really have the luxury of being too fancy. Okay, so we've moved on to the about page. For the rest of the pages, we're gonna keep them pretty simple. We're gonna have a title at the top, we're gonna to have a cover image, and then we're gonna have our text below the image. And uh, what we're gonna do is create this about page, and then we're gonna copy and paste that uh, layout onto each of the pages and use it almost as a template. So we'll get the about page correct. This page was loaded before we changed the, um, the elemental global colors. And that's why the title's still blue. But once we save this and refresh this page, uh, it'll display correctly, so we're not too worried about that just yet. We yeah, want to add a margin below and above the content, add it to the title at first instead of the section. Let's quickly fix that. We're going to copy it and update. And I struggled a bit, you can't just uh, paste it, it seems you have to have an element on the page first. So just added that section, pasted remove that section and then edited the content. So we're now working on the contact page. It's the only one that doesn't have an image. It just has a paragraph of text explaining that people should complete a form and contact us. And then we're going to add a short code here, so long. But first we need to generate the contact form. And to do that we're going to use the contact form 7 plugin. You can use any contact form plugin, whichever one you're most comfortable with. 
this one I, I just know to be quick and easy to use and uh, you know, probably has a default form already set up which uh, saves us a few minutes as well so I'm going to go to contact I'm going to copy that form short code this form's already pre-configured uses the site admin email which is perfect paste it in there and that's our contact page done okay now we're going to do the schedule again we're going to paste that template and then we're just going to rename that to schedule change a picture drop in our copy and do a little bit of styling By styling them and change those two titles to H tags. Okay, I'm gonna update that. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna create a blog post. So um, I'm gonna paste in the content. For some reason I pasted in the page title and not the actual title of the blog post. So I'm going to go and fix that, copy and paste it, and remove that there. And this link we'll need to update at a later stage once we've created the product. We'll just link to the product page and people can purchase their tickets there. And in terms of the uh, blog post, we'll do some housekeeping. We're going to add a category for news. This isn't critical, it's just uh, good practice. We can publish that. Something I didn't mention is all those images we uploaded, uh, if this was a live production site, I'd also recommend uh, taking your time to specify all tags for all of those and just making sure you cross your T's and dot your I's. But with our 30 minute time frame, I kind of to take a few little shortcuts just to make sure we hit the, the mark. Okay, we're going to head to our customizer settings now and we're just going to change the logo and we're going to set a favicon or slight icon for this site. So we click on that. These are Astro settings, so your theme might differ. We're going to choose our logo, which is roughly the correct size already. We'll skip cropping. And then we're just going to set it to hide the site title on all the pages also on all screen sizes and then quickly set the site icon and then we'll have a nice baby icon instead of a WordPress icon on the tab done so it's starting to look like a website it's starting to look like a conference website okay now we're going to create our first product so we've included the content in our doc over here as well I'm going to call it bootconf ticket so to start, I haven't installed any event functionality. So we're just going to set up the standard WooCommerce uh, fields and then we'll install the events plugins to add the additional functionality needed. So we're going to put the product description, the short description. We're going to set a category. I like to use a different category for events opposed to your physical products. We're going to set a product image and then we're going to set up our variations. So in this, this case, we're using variations for ticket types. We can have three different ticket types. We're going to have a delegate, which is your standard ticket. We're going to have a sponsor, which is uh, pretty much a standard ticket, but you pay more and the extra funds are used to help uh, the event. And then it's kind of like a donation. And then we can have a student ticket, which is at a lower price. So, Yeah, there I made a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> I entered the uh, t-shirt sizes instead of the ticket types. So delete that quickly and start over. Lost a few seconds there too. So we're gonna have a delegate, sponsor, and last but not least, student. So we're gonna save this attribute. Just checking the prices there for when we generate them. We're going to go to variations and we're going to generate variation for each of those attributes. Okay, expand them all. So they need to be downloadable and virtual. Reason being is when someone purchases the ticket, as soon as payment's made, WooCommerce will automatically mark the order as complete. And when an order is marked as complete, Foo Events is triggered to generate the ticket. 
You can actually change the status to a custom status or different status um, in the few event settings, but we're going to go with the standard default, which is marking it as complete. And we follow that process for all three of the variations. And now it's time to install the Foo Events plugins. So we head over to plugins. First we save. Then we head over to plugins and add new. Or upload in this case. So these are premium plugins which you can purchase on FooEvents.com. And uh, you got to start installing the main plugin and then all the extensions needed for the different functionality. The reason there's different plugins for different functionality is not everyone needs a PDF ticket or needs to have a multi-day event. So we've kind of separated that into various extensions and uh, this helps you for one, save money if you don't need all of that functionality. And then number two, reduces bloat on your site and that you're only installing what you need and you don't have this huge plugin that has everything installed. I uploaded the one plugin twice there by mistake, which is why we saw that one screen. There's no biggie. Okay, so the Fuvens plugins are installed. We installed the main plugin, the PDF tickets plugin, the custom attendee fields plugin, and then we also installed the multi day plugin, which I'll tell you about later. And here I'm just adding an option to auto complete the attendee fields on the checkout page. So it adds a little button that you can click and it completes them for you. So it saves time, and then I'm setting it to use QR codes instead of barcodes. Mainly because I like the look of QR code codes, and they're also a bit easier to scan. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our Foo Events product. And now you'll see a whole bunch of extra tabs in the product data section. So we're going to go to the event settings. We're going to set it as an event. We're going to choose the select days option. So this is a three-day event, so we're going to choose the three days that the event takes place on. And in this case, it's the 27th, 28th, and 29th of uh, April, 2023. And then we're going to set the start and end times for each of the days. You can have them all start in the same day. There's an option below where you can set that. Or you can have them at different st uh, start and end times, which is often the case with a multi-day conference or festival. So we're going to set different ones. And then these are displayed on the ticket and on the product page. So it's quite handy for your, your customers. So we set it, set our time zone. That's quite important. And then we're just completing the uh, standard fields like the venue, GPS coordinates, directions to the event, the phone number, and the email address. Just good housekeeping. And this information is also available to your customers on the ticket and on the product page. So it's worthwhile completing it as best you can. And we're not using the calendar, but again, just good habit complete these correctly. So now we're choosing the fields we want to display. We're going to do the attendee's name and email address. Later on we're going to create custom fields and here we're setting the ticket theme. So we're using the default ticket theme. We're going to upload a logo and a graphic for the ticket. This is the ticket that will uh, be sent to you, your attendee's email accounts and it'll also generate a PDF using these uh, settings. You can customize the subject. You can also, we have a number of um, template variables that you can place in the subject as well, like the attendee's name, the event, um, loads of other details, which is also very handy. Is that in the wrong place? It's in the email body. Yeah, we're choosing the colors we want to use in our ticket template. I'm just choosing blue. I should use that uh, color code, but this was close enough. And we only got 30 minutes. <laughs> And uh, we're displaying the price, the multi-day details, and we're emailing the tickets to the purchaser just so we don't need to select that option there. And now we're setting up the custom attendee field. So at checkout, these fields will be displayed along with the attendee's name. And if you have multiple attendees, you'll be able to capture these details for each attendee. So we're going to do a t-shirt size, and we're going to have the options, the size of the options in a select drop-down box. We can have a text field for their Twitter handle, which you might want to share with other attendees. And then their website URL. Again, these are just examples. Uh, you can create whichever fields you need for your event. It's also handy for disclaimers, terms and conditions, um, privacy information to get them to opt in. You can add it on an attendee level over there. And that was a product for our ticket. And now we're moving on to the t-shirt. So the reason we threw this example in is just to illustrate that you can purchase both for events tickets as well as standard products using WooCommerce and free events. So this is for a t-shirt which we're selling to help raise funds and it's just a standard product, it's variable, 
uh, product in that you can choose different t-shirt sizes. I think we kept all of them the same price, so you don't necessarily need to do this, but it's uh, again just to illustrate what can be done. We're going to generate our variations. And we're going to set the stock and price for each of those variations of here. They don't need to be downloadable, downloadable or virtual, but we are going to manage stock. So you know, in this uh, scenario, we have 100 uh, of each size t-shirt. So we're going to set them as $10, and then stock is going to be set as 100 for each size. I'm trying to move through these quite quickly now, because uh, we, we're cutting through our time quite dr dramatically. So set our product image, nice t-shirt, the logo on it. And we're also going to set a category for clothing. Should probably be merchandise, but this we'll keep it clothing. Publish that. Okay, there's our product. So this is a standard WooCommerce product, which you can purchase at the same time as your free events ticket. I think the idea with this site was, and most conferences do this as well, as if you do purchase additional merchandise, you collect it at the event. So you don't need to capture additional shipping information and you can complete the order without having to worry about shipping it as you'll take payment straight away anyway. Okay, and the last little bit of housekeeping. Something uh, I like to do on all our sites is install an SMTP plugin. This just makes it so that you can use an authenticated email address to send uh, tickets and site emails back and forth. And especially when sending tickets, you want to ensure that uh, the reliability of your site to send tickets to your attendees is high. And the best way to do that is through an authenticated SMTP account. You'll notice I blur out my account details over there. So you, the, you could, in this case, uh, I'm using uh, one of our own SMTP accounts, but you could use a Gmail account even, and uh, that'll stop your emails from being picked up as spam. The actual email templates are well crafted and we avoid uh, anything that could uh, result in them being picked up as spam. So once you do this, you, you're pretty much set. That's it, takes two minutes and saves you a lot of headaches. Did a quick test over there to our test account. Okay, we could do the DMARC option, but for this demo, it's not critical. There you go. Test email came through. That just guarantees that our ticket's gonna come through and our WooCommerce emails will come through to the customers without any issue. Last but not least, I think we're going to quickly modify the homepage. Um, remember we dumped the text beneath the top section. So we're gonna try and quickly make it look a little bit nicer with the time we have remaining, which is not too long, around a minute. How I want to set it up here is I want to have the title and paragraph for each of those sections separate along with a picture. I'm just going to use some of our stock images, drag them across. So my strategy here is to create this section, get this one correct, and then just duplicate it and swap the two columns around. So we just need to center line all of that. Okay, and this, you know, it's, it's not the most beautiful homepage, you know, as a designer, I would want to spend many hours getting this page nice, but it's a good for half an hour website, it's, it's a, a solid effort, it's uh, automatically responsive as well, by nature, thanks to Elementor and Astra, so, you know, we, we get, we're covering a lot of ground with what we're doing here, and then we're going to swap that around still, and change our copy. And the last thing we need to do is change the image. 
try and find one we haven't used before. And there we have it. We're we'll about to run out of time. Done. That's 30 minutes and we have a functional website for the home page, of our page, the schedule page, our blog, contact page with the functional contact form, and of course we have a store. So um, we'll go through the checkout process. We'll first add a t-shirt. We'll then go to our ticket and here if you scroll down and have a look at the event details section, you'll see all those details we captured are, are displayed here. You can use a third party plugin to make this tab display first rather than description um, if you need to. So we're going to add a ticket to our cart. We're going to go to the actual cart where we've got the two products, up here at the price. Proceed to checkout. And then here we need to complete the attendee fields. So we use that shortcut copy option that we enabled earlier. Complete the fields. If you had multiple attendees, you'd complete these fields for each of your attendees. And you can set for events to either send the ticket emails to the individual attendees or to the purchaser. So in this case, we're sending it to the purchaser, which happens to be the same email address as the attendee. And once you're done and the order is completed, you can go to the My Account Order section, view the order, and you'll see your ticket there. You can also download a PDF ticket version and you can view the ticket in your email. As an administrator, you can view the tickets in the WordPress admin area, you can modify them as well. And then you can go to the free events pause, which we installed, and you can use this to sell tickets at your event. And the uh, beauty of this is it works seamlessly with free events, it's built for it. For example, you can catch all the attendee fields, booking information, seating information, and it's all perfectly seamless. And you can also use Stripe and Square uh, hardware devices to process card payments. Um, or you could use your third party card payment uh, option and just list it as a card payment. We'll print receipts, which also include the ticket. This we also have uh, compatibility with receipt printers, thermal receipt printers, so you can look really professional at your event. And then lastly, at your event, you can use the Free Events Check-ins app to scan the tickets and help you manage registration. This will update the ticket information in the system, so you'll always have an accurate count of how many people have already arrived. And because it's a multi-day event, you can do this for each day of the event separately. And that's the video. We made it to 30 minutes. Thank you for sticking with me. If you have any questions, please visit freeevents.com, get in touch, and we'll do our best to assist. Thanks for watching.